Christmas, fun, fun, fun stuff. The holidays, uh, how, are you guys going to go kazoo caroling? You got, you got to do it. You got to do it. It's going to be so much fun. That just sounds wild. But um, the simplicity of a kazoo, like that, that reminds me of the, of the holidays and how simple they are, really at heart. Uh, how many of you guys have Christmas traditions? You guys... What are your Christmas traditions? Come on. What are your Christmas traditions? What have you got? Come on. Help me out here. Christmas Eve service. What about family traditions? Christmas. You do Christmas carols. Just on the street. Oh, that's nice. What else? Hmm? Pajamas on Christmas Eve. Oh, that's nice. I like that. The, uh, think back to your childhood memories of Christmas, just for a moment. Childhood memories of Christmas. Good? You got them? If you're old enough, you won't have any. Um, what are the things that you remember and enjoy the most? We're, Christmas tree. What else? Hmm? Family time. Doing what? Together. Doing what? Eating, <laughs> opening gifts, watching football. Do you hear any complex memories here? It's the simple things, isn't it? It's amazing how we make a huge production out of Christmas and various other kinds of events, but we remember the simple things. How many of you have made popcorn strings? Right? Tried? Yeah. Back when I made popcorn the right way. Good? Popcorn strings. How many of you made cranberry strings? Have you made cranberry strings? Simple thing. You know where you string, you string popcorn or cranberries on? And then they make decorations back when you made decorations instead of... How about bread ornaments? How many of you have made bread ornaments? Raise your hand. Okay. Bread ornaments where you make bread that isn't bread and the kids taste it and it's super salty and you make it into all these bizarre shapes and then it, you turn it into an ornament, right? Like, like those weird things that they hang on people's walls. Ugly stuff, really hideous stuff, but we make it. How many of you made paper ring chains? Paper ring chains, you ever done paper ring chains? Good. We remember those things. And one of the things about those kinds of activities is that as a kid, you're just thinking that you're having fun making paper ring chains. Or you're thinking, oh, I'm having fun stringing popcorn. But what's in the mom's head and what's in the dad's head when we're going to make a little bread ornament? What's the dad and the mom, what are the dad and the mom thinking at that point? This thing is going to be around until Christ returns. <laughs> this is our memorial. Like, remember, kids, when you were kids, having fun putting your hand in plaster of Paris? Making something. I, I, went to, I remember being, at, uh, being sent to a, a conservative, evangelical, Baptist school as, a, as like a first grader. And we made ashtrays. <laughs> These are people who believe that you will spend your life in perdition if you have a tobacco product. But we made ashtrays because that's what you do. Because they weren't really ashtrays, were they? The, the parents are thinking, I want an impression of my kid's hand for the long haul. The, the parents' agenda is much broader. It's much longer. The tradition that you're trying to establish with your kids is much longer and broader. The kid's thinking, I'm having fun this Christmas. And the parent is thinking, I'm having fun at all Christmases. We're setting this up so that our family has something to look back on over and over again. Or making a stocking, right? You know that the artwork is going to be horrific. And you're loving every moment of it because then when the kid is 15, you can rub their noses in it. You see, you say, this is what you did when you were at the height of your artistic powers. Uh, something like that. And it's fun, it's fun to reflect for decades on that stuff. We still have a box full of Kimberly's crayon drawings from being a child. And we love that stuff, and you yank all that out at Christmas. So, um, welcome back to Sunday School. We're going to do crafts this morning. We're going to do craft. Okay, you ready to do craft together for, for Sunday morning Christmas? 
service? Okay, good. You should all have small strips of paper, right? Do you see very colored strips of paper? Ushers, deacons, can we get those to everybody? Now, there are three very complex moving parts to this craft. A pen, a strip of paper, and scotch tape. Good? Because we want to preserve the integrity of the upholstery. So, we have a, you have a pen, you should have paper, and you should have scotch tape. If you don't have tape, we'll get the tape to you. But right now, we're going to focus on those strips. Part of the Advent series that KCF has covered is talking about being stuck. That this is a world that is stuck. That, that reality has become stuck. Human society has become stuck and people have become stuck. So here's what we're going to do. You got a pen? How many of you have a pen? Raise your pen over your, hand, over your head. There we go. Good. How many of you have a paper? I want you to write on one side of this piece of paper the things that are stuck about human existence. Okay? Now, being stuck reminds you of the things that are frustrating, the things that are irreversible and inevitable. Think about the things that really feel stuck in your life, the things that feel like, man, I wish this was not here, but I can't get past it. And think about the things, additionally, that are stuck about human society and about the world, the things you go, I wish the world was not this way. I look out in the world, in society, and I see there is something desperately wrong. There is something amiss. So think, think just for a moment about the things that are stuck or amiss in your life and the things that are stuck or amiss in reality, in the world, in human society. I think immediately of things like death and sorrow shame, the things that are stuck. And I want you to write on that strip of paper, write those things. Write a bunch of names, the words, the words that come to mind. This is like stream of consciousness poetry, you know? So, like, get into the groove and just let the words flow. And Good? You can think of all the words that come to mind when somebody cuts you off on the, on the road, but really think about the things that are deeply frustrating to your heart. The stuff that assails you right before you fall asleep at night. The things you wake up to that immediately come to mind as you become conscious that you wish you weren't waking up to. Those are the things we're talking about. The things that make you feel stuck. Those things that make you go bleh. Now, the idea of being stuck, intrinsic within it, is the idea that you are stuck from something, correct? Like, you're not stuck unless there's something else to get to. Being stuck means I'm trying to get from here to there, and I can't get to there because I'm intermediate somehow. I'm, I'm stuck. But it anticipates what's called a teleology. In other words, a point of fruition out past it, that there's something else and we all have that kind of sense of longing. C.S. Lewis calls it a numinous awe. That we have this... Have you ever wondered, like, thought about the idea that people say, how can there be a God in a world with so much evil? And the, immediate, the question to reply with is, why do you think that's evil if that's all we observe? Shall I say that again? People say, why, how can there be a God in a world with so much evil? And the immediate question is, is to return to say, why do you think it's evil if that's all that we observe? Because we don't see rightness in reality. We see wrongness in reality. And an empirical or scientific stance would say that is the way reality is. And because that is the way reality is, that is the way reality should be. But inside of us, something goes, no, it's supposed to be better. There's supposed to be something different than what we're actually experiencing. And so we say, the world is wrong, the world is evil, there's so much evil in the world, whereas if we were truly scientific and, and, you know, and empirical, we would say, yes, people do these behaviors, that's just their behaviors, like a lion eats an antelope, that's just the way it is. We would say that is the order of life, not that there should be something else that we've never seen in the world. 
Does that make sense? So the objection, why is there evil in the world, assumes that there should be good. So I want you to write on the other side all the things about which we should be unstuck. On the other side of the paper, turn it over and write about the things that you're trying to get to and that you wish the world would get to. The things that you wish were in your life and the things that you wish were in the world. You go, man, wouldn't it be lovely if in my life this was present? If this was the characteristic of my life? Write that on the other side, including life. (laughs) Death is one of the horrors of this world. You think about, the, on the bad side, there's despair, but on the good side, there's hope. There's beauty. All of the lovely things. All the wonderful things. The things that we wish suffused our lives. The things that we're trying to get to when we feel stuck. And the things that we wish suffused the world. Again, stream of consciousness, just write a bunch of words down. Okay. Everybody have your paper? Everybody have your tape. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take that stuff about which you're stuck, put it on the inside, on the one side. Uh, Make a loop. Remember, you're making a paper chain, just like ornaments for Christmas. Okay, can you make a loop like that? Uh, You can tape that with your first piece of tape. Good? Everybody got that? I mean, it's really tough. Make a loop out of a strip of paper. (sighs) Now, this, friends, is your hamster wheel. This is what it means to be stuck. Right? And you wish it would do that, actually. This is what it feels like. You can sense that there's good stuff on the outside all the up stuff, but we're stuck in the down stuff, right? And we're like, I'm trying to get to the, every time you try to get the outside, you just run around over into the bad stuff again. This is the hamster wheel. This is what we live in. Because it, I don't know about you, but I have found that every time I try to fix something that's in my life that I don't like, I run into the next thing that I don't like, and I, I try to fix that, and I run into the next thing I don't like. And I end up on this hamster wheel, and it just goes round and round and round. And going, like I'm trying to get to the, to the sunflower seeds out there. And we can smell it, but we can't get to it. Here's what I want you to do. Take that apart again. Everybody, if you can hold it up in the air like this. Good, you got it? Okay. Now take one side, flip it, and tape it back again. Good? See that? So you take your, you take your loop, and you flip your loop and you retape your loop. Good? Yeah, somebody knows their math. Good. Now tape it. Tape it, tape it, tape it, tape it. Okay. Good? We all got it? Tape it, tape it as strong as you can. Now, put your thumb on the bad stuff. Put your thumb on the start of the bad stuff. You got it? Put your thumb on the start of the bad stuff. Cool. I want you to, or you can put your pen down. Okay, so like put it there, put your pen. Put your pen near your your thumb. Now, Now pull the paper through your thumb. Your thumb is the reader. Read all the bad stuff and just keep pulling the paper. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Imagine that your thumb is a pen. Good. What happens? What's that? You get, it goes over on the other side. Now, here's the, the trouble in the language, right? We said both sides, didn't we? But your thumb was only on one side. Did you take your thumb off one side? You only put it on one side. But if you keep going, it goes through all of it. How is it that your thumb 
can only be on one side, but it covers all of it. Are, are there both sides? No. There are not both sides. You can take a pen, put a pen where your thumb is, right, and pull it through the pen and see where the line goes. Go ahead and try that. Take the pen, put it down, and pull it underneath the pen. Now, your pen is not going to come up from the paper, but what happens? What happens? The line is on all of it. You experience everything. You experience everything. Okay, there's this Dutch guy, okay, Dutch, I think Dutch, uh, uh, mathematician named Mobius. And he was considering the reality A times B equals B times A. Got it? A times B equals B times A. We all not know that from freshman algebra, right? Although now they teach that in second grade. <laughs> on an iPhone. Uh, so A times B equals B times A equals what? Parentheses. A times B equals B times A equals AB, which is 1. He said, can you do that in reality, not just math? And he made this strip. This thing that you hold in your hand looks like it has two sides, but it only has one side. It also only has one edge. If you've ever toured like through an old steam era industrial plant, you will notice the conveyor belts always look wrong. The drive belts always look wrong. They have a twist in them. That's because they knew this principle, and they would make conveyor belts, or rather uh, drive belts, out of Mobius strips because they wear completely evenly. There's only one side and only one edge. And so they always make this drive that's only one. It looks like it has two, but it's only one. Now, this is a little bit like living in a um, what, mutual property state. What is a mutual property state? Hmm? Both partners have equal ownership. So, uh, young people, you know, you meet, you meet the person of your dreams, and she's a multi-billionaire, and you, and you have like $60,000 worth of uh, college debt, and you have $60,000 worth of debt, and she has like uh, $2.4 billion, and you get married. How much of your debt does she own? All of it. How much of her wealth do you own? All of it. It's not that one cancels out the other, it's that both own all of both. A times B equals B times A equals AB. Now, I don't know about you, but the Jesus thing sounds crazy to me. It sounds really weird. Okay, what? what? You're talking two natures, fully God, fully man, one guy, five foot five Palestinian, divine. I don't, you know, okay. I'm willing to go with it. Okay, died on a cross for my sins, and I don't understand. I'm living now in the 21st century, and how does that work? I don't understand how his resurrection makes a difference for me. Here's the thing. This is a mutual property universe. It's a mutual property universe, and it looks like human, human God. It looks like there are two sides to this, but then God goes, okay, <laughs> There's only one, but it's really two. But it's really one, but it's really two. You like that? <laughs> and then he says, now here's the deal. You and me. You and me. You and me. There's you, and there's me. And you are a dead man, and I am infinite. Now what we're going to do is we're going to marry you to me. And when that happens, we look like we're two, but you're the body of Christ. Or as he says in John 17, I am in them, and thou in me. This is Jesus praying to the Father. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be one, even as we are one. That is massive. Second Corinthians puts it this way. 
For God hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He says, I want you to conflate your identity, to, to, to do this, to mesh your identity with mine. And if you mesh your identity with mine, my infinite life now will course through you. And you can start at any kind of garbage you want. And as soon as you come back to my life, my infinite life is going to renew that. that see, that's the issue. Have you, have you, are you guys familiar with this? this familiar with this symbol? If you turn it sideways, what does it look like? It's an eight, right? That infinity symbol is the Mobius strip. It's this. It just goes round and round. You can't beat it. And that's what happened when they strung Jesus up and they shoved him in the dirt. Death went, I'm going to get him. But see, death is finite and Christ is infinite. He's the ground of being and death reached up to swallow him and choked on his infinity. It burnt out. You cannot keep a God man down. It just, you can't, you can't get, because it, it, I got you in death, and it's like, oh, wait, wait, we're back at life again. Oh, I got you in death. It's, it's a feedback loop that burnt out. And Jesus reaches out his hand. He says, you know, I, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man opens the door, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. Jesus says, come on, let me in. Let, let me be your husband, you be my bride in a mutual property relationship. And when that happens, infinity will grab hold of you. And your righteousness will be as unbreakable. It's like he hands you a bowling ball and a rubber mallet and says, knock yourself out. You are not going to break this thing. Death can't. So like it says, like Peter preaching, he says, for it was not possible for him to be holden of death. It's not possible. This infinity goes too far too fast. And, and the Lord's like, I know you get Christmas, me coming and all that, but my plan is so much bigger. I got this thing that's, that's it's, it's reality wide. I want to put this in you so that your righteousness, your unrighteousness keeps coming back to my righteousness. Your holiness keeps coming back to my holiness. But the thing is, you gotta say, I do. 2 Corinthians says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do you realize how pervasive that all is? And you are no longer stuck. At least you're not stuck in death. You are stuck in life. And it's like a conveyor belt. You just shove all your garbage on it, all my broken hopes and dreams, all my fears, all my terrors, all my shames, all my guilt, all the things that I'm stuck about, all of my failures, and oh my gosh, I'm back at the life of Jesus. What do you mean I'm holy? Thank you, Lord. That's what he wants for our lives. It's like, get on this conveyor belt with me. I want to read that for you out of John 17, Jesus' prayer. 1720. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. No, just as, the same infinity, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I in them, verse 23, and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them as you loved me. That's the message of Christmas. That's Advent, that God has a much bigger, better plan than we can imagine. And it's really fun for us to be Christians now, but we, we get caught in the, oh, Jesus is good for my life now. He'll make my life better. He'll relieve my sense of guilt. That's not it. It's so much bigger. It's eternity. And that little baby in the manger, when you see that every time, just see this Mobius strip wrapped in that baby and realize the manger is infinity in an infant. Crushed down into an infant. And let that be the life in you. And say, I do to Christ this Christmas.
Now, as you leave today, there are some little wire Christmas hangers, you know, ornament hangers. And you can grab one of those. And I encourage you, put it on this thing and hang it on your Christmas tree. This will be your ornament to remind you of infinity in an infant this year. There's also, there's a gift from us to you, a leather bracelet. And it has snaps and you can make the same kind of strip out of it. If you want to give one and explain Jesus to somebody, take two. But in the meantime, let's pray for a moment and here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine this infinite loop Mobius strip conveyor belt. And I want you to see Jesus on the one side and you on the other. And it looks like there's two sides, but there's really one. And if you would do this, there are things in your life that you don't have to name. All you have to do is point to them. But as we pray, I want you to imagine yourself at that conveyor belt. And there's all that stuff about which you're stuck. And I want you to put that on that conveyor belt and watch it go over to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how wonderful you are. We give you all of our junk. We give you the discards of our dreams. We give you our faults, our failures, all, every failed attempt. We give you the sin that draws us, the disappointment that nags at us about the world. We give you everything that we can't fix. We put this on because we have no other place to put it. We put it on you. Take it into your life, Lord. Grab hold of it with your infinity. Make life out of death and put us in your eternity, we pray. In your name and to your glory, Lord Jesus. Amen.